beautiful spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain the little house that's still standing today where I spent the first four years of my life. Uh, I was surprised when we found it again because it is still standing. Because uh, I remember the memories from there, it was pretty little, but every night my mom would take me down to the creek. It's the Sioux River, and we lived just on the east side of the Sioux River, and so you'd have the sunset on the bluff. I remember that bluff. Every night the sun would be setting on there, and we'd be down at the water. I was setting in it and playing in it, and then Mom was trying to show me to fit, how to fish. And to go back there, I thought, I wouldn't know if it was the way I remembered it, but it was. It was the way I remembered it. It was really neat. And all those memories, they, they stuck with me through the years from hunting and fishing. And gee, when I got into the wildlife, it was just, it was like, it was great. It was like going back to being a kid again. I had a handle, that a reputation at, at an early age. They, uh, about, I know it was in the third grade, I constantly was looking out the window daydreaming. I was an incurable daydreamer. And by the time I reached the fourth grade, I know, third grade teacher told the fourth grade teacher, well, windows redland, you better get him to the inside of the room because all he does is daydream. All I, all I could do is think of, of going out hunting and fishing, nothing else ever. All the paintings I do, I, I, I try to strive for them. To me, the most number one thing in the picture is, is what kind of a mood are you after? What sort of a mood? Whether it be a full daytime mood or morning or night or, or late time moods. But the romantic realism landscape has to be convincing. It has to seem like it's real, but it's not photographic either. People say that, gee, it's just like a photograph. Well, yeah, it's not really a photograph at all. There's, uh, if you put a regular photograph up against it, that's a whole different kind of a feel. I started talking about this, this project, this concept of, of illustrating this song, America the Beautiful, in, in my style. Uh, it, it seemed kind of overwhelming uh, at, at first. I couldn't, I thought, oh, this is, it's too big a project. But uh, that, that was the earlier years. This was some time ago that I had started on this and that we had talked about it. I was, I was doing other paintings, but I could work this in gradually, starting the sketches and, and slowly working it in between. And then I started to get more excited and more excited about it, and the family was getting excited about it. And, and uh, so then about four years ago, I, I finally got into the actual painting of the pictures. All eight of those paintings are tied together in, in various ways. Uh, they're in a chronological order from like the early wagon train is the first one in spacious skies all the way to from sea to shining sea is the kids fishing on the dock in modern times. That's kind of like from the beginning to the the end result that I like on a fishing dock in the end with the kids you know and through every through all eight paintings are there's a boy and a girl somewhere in, in the pictures and a dog all, all the time and they go all the way from the beginning to the end and also there's a touch of wildlife in every painting. Oh beautiful for spacious skies On Oh beautiful for spacious skies which is the first painting that one I, I didn't want just all sky so it was as far down as I thought I could get and still have every all the elements that I wanted the, the wagon train coming over the prairie and the, uh, the, the mongrel dog that's running along out in front off to one side discovering the skull. Uh, the guides off to the other side. With the eagle, he had to be just, just the right size. If he was too far away, you wouldn't see it. If he was a little bigger than what it would be, it would lose that spacious feeling because I've, I've got that balance in there. And I, I think it worked out very well. For amber waves of grain for Amber Waves of Grain, which is the second picture of the series, I wanted to convey a feeling of just long open space. So I used the uh, husband and wife are breaking ground with a single bottom plow, just starting. They, uh, they set up their homestead, it's on the hill, and uh, I wanted the feeling of a lot of distance in the evening. And uh, with the wild grain is basically what's in the picture. And then down in the, in the valley part, you can see all, all the wild grain. The creek is winding through. And that creek is a reminder of where I grew up on the prairie uh, in between the, the rolling hills, you know, the Sioux River. For purple mountain. 
mountain majesty. The third painting in the series that I did was, was Purple Mountain Majesties. That's the one with the, uh, I used the Grand Tetons as the backdrop. The boy and the girl and the dog are more predominant with their horses. Uh, however, the wildlife in the picture, the people look very closely and in the background you'll see the elk that are come, coming up from the valley. I've got a, I've got a nice sky picture in it, but the, the mountain parts were predominant. They, they, I wanted them to be the predominant point. That's why I picked the Tetons. Everybody knows them, or should. If they haven't been there, they should be there because it, it's one of the most beautiful.